In this video, we're going to have a quick rundown of how to design a reasonable experiment in order to test a hypothesis. We'll start by going over some quick learning objectives for this video. First thing you need to be able to do is to be able to identify the appropriate independent and dependent variables in your experiment as they relate back to a hypothesis. Uh, you need to be able to identify the reasonable controls that you should be employing in your experiment to ensure that your experiment gives the correct results. And last but not least, you should be able to design an experiment by putting all of this stuff together and matching it up to a re our related hypothesis. Before we dive into the actual concept, remember this is all part of the scientific method, which is what you guys are seeing here. Uh, and as we said a couple times in class, the scientific method can be broken down into a couple steps and a lot of steps. This little flowchart here shows something in the middle. Uh, we're going to focus today on this section right here where we're going to be testing an experiment um, which is going to be based on the hypothesis that we've already created earlier. And as we're going to see, the way you word this hypothesis up here very strongly relates back to how the experiment is designed below. If for some reason the scientific method is unfamiliar to you, take a moment and stop the video, go back and watch the previous video on the scientific method, then come back to experimental design, which will hopefully make a little bit more sense. The main work we're going to do here is identifying what the different type of variables actually mean. Uh, we'll start with the independent variable. The independent variable, uh, by definition, is the factor that you purposely change during the experiment. You're altering the independent variable during the experiment, and you're doing that to see how it affects the rest of the system. When I alter my independent variable, what happens to everything else? Your experimental procedure must alter this throughout trial to trial. So in each individual trial, your independent variable is going to change. Connected then to the independent variable is the dependent variable. This is the factor that you allow to change as a result to what you did with the independent variable. Another way of thinking about your dependent variable, it is simply the results of the experiment. When I do stuff up here to my independent variable, it has an impact down here on my dependent variable. And a way of saying that down here is that the dependent variable is dependent on the independent variable. Last thing I'll say is that this is the variable you'll be measuring throughout the entire experiment. Now before we move on, uh, let's talk a little bit more about these two guys, but not separately now. Let's talk about them combined with one another. Uh, there's two things we can say about the independent variable and the dependent variable. First of which is we can say this. Uh, the real purpose of our experiment is to determine the relationship between our independent and our dependent variables. That's really what you're trying to accomplish. Your hypothesis is going to identify what you think that relationship is, and then the experiment itself is going to confirm whether that relationship does or does not exist. That all being said, we can take this one step further, is that these two guys need to be mentioned in your hypothesis. Uh, and this kind of gets people in trouble sometimes. Sometimes we mention our hypothesis which forces us to have certain independent and dependent variables, in which case then you have to go back, reword those hypotheses again until it's an independent and dependent variable you can actually work with. One last thing before we move on, if you're using the if-then-because format for your hypothesis, uh, the independent variable is always the if statement, and the dependent variable is always the then statement. Um, so you can keep track of which is which. And it's again, if you're using that format, it makes it a little easier to identify uh, what your independent and dependent variable is, or at the very least to word your hypothesis properly. Now the independent and dependent variables are the ones we're controlling during the experiment and focusing on, but there are other variables we need to be careful as well, and those we refer to as the experimental controls. Uh, the experimental controls are basically all of the other factors that could reasonably affect the outcome of the experiment other than the independent variable. They need to be kept constant. We cannot allow these variables to change, uh, and that ensures that when we see things happen to our independent or our dependent variable, we know those changes happened only because of what we did to the independent variable. 
When you allow other factors in your experiment to change uh, that are not properly controlled, they might influence the dependent variable, and often they do that in a way that we can't necessarily quantify or we can't keep track of. As a result, we don't know if what happened in the experiment is a result of the independent variable or if it's a result of one of these other uncontrolled factors. I think in some cases the controls can be one of the most difficult things to identify. It's always better to err on the side of caution. Think of everything you can possibly deal with and make sure those are controlled. Or those are accounted for and held constant from trial to trial. To wrap things up, we'll do a very quick little example here. Uh, we're going to have an observation made during a planting of some beans, and we'll use that to create a hypothesis and an experiment to test it. Uh, the observation we've made is that in the spring, you planted a rows of bean plants. After a few months of growings, uh, growing, the rows grew to different heights. And the question you want to answer as a, a person growing plants is, why did this happen? first thing we're going to want to do is take some time and identify the variables that we have present. Uh, and they can be lots of different things. The amount of sun, the amount of water, fertilize, maybe we use different species of plants, quality of soil, time growing, etc., etc. In your particular experiment, you'll choose some factors that you think might be uh, of interest, and then you'll go with that. For example, we can take some time and say, well, maybe some of those plants got more water and other of those plants got less water. We can identify water as something we want to change from trial to trial, therefore making it our independent variable. Now, as a result of changing the quantity of water, we have the expectation that we're going to get different heights of our plants, and that's going to be our dependent variable. So we'll have to conduct an experiment then that gives different plants different quantities of water, probably very specifically measured, and then over the course of many months we'll see if that has an overall impact on our plant height. Uh, we can formulate that into a hypothesis then if a plant, uh, uh, a bean plant, sorry, if a bean plant receives more water, so it's talking about water, notice we have our if statement identifying our independent variable, then, here's our then staple, it will grow to a larger height because plants water is needed for a healthy plant. So again, the if identified the independent, the then statement um, identified the dependent variable, and then we have an explanation afterwards. Uh, just to wrap things up then, to kind of go over what we've done, uh, we took some time to identify and basically define the term independent and dependent variables with a quick example of identifying those. Uh, we took some time to identify the reasonable controls of an experiment. And last but not least, uh, we took some time to create, to talk, see how that all folds into creating a testable hypothesis, something that you can actually use in an experiment. During class, we'll be employing this in a couple different ways, and then again throughout the year, every time you guys are performing an experiment, so it's a great skill to make sure you're nice and comfortable with.